Hello and welcome to Off to the Races. I am your horse racing analyst, Alec, and I will be taking you through the weekly current events of horse racing throughout the year all over the world. On this week's show, we will be covering the past 50-point prep races from this year's Kentucky Derby prep season and looking at the future of this weekend. War of Will, the star of the Louisiana Derby preps, in action as we go to the Louisiana Derby, the first 100-point prep on the way towards the Kentucky Derby. The first 50-point prep, the risen star included War of Will, winner of the LeCompte Stakes, winner, and he was undefeated on dirt, too. And it looks like he's going to be pretty good. He came from the outside post. Tyler Gaffleyon gave him a great ride, got him onto the rail as they went into the first turn, held his position, came out onto the top of the stretch, and just started to run away from the field, although he looks like he's going to be more of a grinder type than a horse who wants to win by 10. Now, the horse who ran behind him, Country House, he looks like he has some upside. However, he was lugging in towards the rail many times throughout the stretch, and the thought really is that no matter how many times they went around the track, he was never going to get by War of Will. He just looked like he was done. He had hit a wall. He was not going to go anymore. A horse I'm interested about out of, out of that race going to the Louisiana Derby, Limonite. He, although he finished fifth, he came up the rail, got a very bad trip at the top of the stretch, and it looks like he has of some upside if he can get the right trip in the Louisiana Derby. However, he would most likely need a hot pace, and that's not something I think is going to um, happen in this race. Two weeks after the Risen Star Stakes, Hidden Scroll returned in the Fountain of Youth, fresh off a 14-length maiden win in the slop on Pegasus World Cup Day. However, he found himself in a much tougher field on this day, which included Vacoma, winner of the Nashua, and Signalman, winner of the Kentucky Jockey Club. However, the, none of those three won. It was Code of Honor, hyped after the champagne before a rough performance in the Mucho Macho Man, returns on his two-turn debut to beat Bourbon War, a fast-closing second, Vacoma third, a nice third, actually, and Hidden Scroll, a bit of a disappointing fourth. However, those three were only about three and a quarter lengths or so away from each other at the wire. The Florida Derby should be good. It looks like all four horses could return to that very spot. The week after the Fountain of Youth, the Gotham featured a strong field, including Instagram, returning off a long layoff for Jerry Hollendorfer after winning two races by a combined 20 and a quarter lengths. However, on this day, it was not meant to be. The Gotham started out as a pace duel between Nick's Go, runner-up of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and much better, the Bob Baffert trainee dueling through extremely fast fractions, including a f half mile in 44 and 1. That's pretty much suicide for a mile. As they went to the far turn, Mar much better was four or five lengths in front, as Mind Control, High Cal, and Instagram were trying to keep up. Turning into the top of the stretch, it was obvious much better was going to weaken, and Mind Control coming up the rail and Instagram posed major threats. However, nobody saw High Cow on the way outside until the eighth pull when he came storming up the middle of the track to get there in the end. Mind Control was a nice second, Instagram a disappointing third, and much better finishing fourth. On the same day as the Gotham, there was no strong field in the Tampa Bay Derby, but it looked like a field with possible upside, including Dream Maker, an impressive allowance winner for Mark Cassie, and win, 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 winner of the Pasco Stakes. However, none of them won. It was Tacitus coming up the rail after strong early fractions set by Well Defined, and he won pretty nicely, setting a stakes record, almost a track record. What's interesting about this performance is he got dusted in workouts by Hidden Scroll, and yet he was the one who won the big prep. It looks like he'll be in the Derby, Outshine, a good horse for Todd Pletcher. He finished second, and this is a pretty weak year for Todd Pletcher Derby horses, so I'm not thinking about him as a possible Derby winner. 
Win 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 ran a nice third surging at the end and Dream Maker did not show up at all. Because of the many horse tragedies at Santa Anita Park, the Rebel Stakes was forced to split into two divisions, one carrying one Baffert monster, the other carrying the other. I'm talking about Improbable and Game Winner. In Rebel Division 1, it was Improbable's turn to shine, and it looked like he was going to win super easily coming to the top of the stretch, but then... Something just happened, and he wasn't able to carry on the pace that it looked like he would be, and long-range Toddy, the up-and-comer from Steve Asmussen, got up to beat the Baffert monster by a neck. Galilean was third, Extra Hope was fourth, in a pretty solid field in Rebel Division 1. Rebel Division 2 featured a stronger field than Rebel Division 1, headlined by the Kentucky Derby favorite so far, game winner, winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and two-year-old champion of 2018. However, he had some challengers, such as Omaha Beach, an impressive maiden winner for Richard Mandela, and Gunmetal Gray, who upset Coliseum at the beginning of the year in the sham. At top of the stretch, it looked like game winner was completely defeated. Omaha Beach, who was a horse that a lot of people thought could upset game winner, was about three lengths ahead, as they came into the final 3 16th pull or so. And then Game Winner, showing his real grit that he has, came flying up in Omaha Beach and Game Winner battled it out to the wire. Omaha Beach just getting the nod by a very, very slim nose. After all those 50 point prep races, I thought it would be appropriate to make a top 10 for this week's show. And my number one, is the Breeders' Cup Juvenile winner, Game Winner. He showed his tremendous grit at the top of the stretch, and he proved that he can be bounced around and still win. Not only that, but he also has a grade one win at Churchill Downs. I think that Game Winner has a tremendous chance to win the Kentucky Derby. He looks to be in the Santa Anita Derby next. My number two horse is War of Will, the winner of the Lecompte and Risen Star and Undefeated on Dirt. He was a Breeders' Cup also ran, but that was on the turf. I think he's found a real home on the dirt, and he's definitely going to win the Louisiana Derby on Saturday. Now, number three is probably going to be a shocker a bit, but I put Win Win Win, third place finisher of the Tampa Bay Derby, at number three. Although that may sound a bit insane, I think that he showed a good amount of speed in the Tampa Bay Derby, going two turns for the first time with a really bad start, and his second and third quarter bounced out at a 46 half mile coming from behind. And it, although he might be a sprinter, I think he has a chance, and I think the bluegrass is where he's going to go next. My number four is the other Baffert monster, Improbable. Although he finished second in the Rebel, I'm willing to give him another chance after the three impressive performances that we saw in 2018. Number five is Rebel Division II winner, Omaha Beach. He showed that he can really beat the best, including game winner, Gunmetal Gray, and other horses. He looks to be in either the Arkansas Derby or Santa Anita Derby next out. I'd like to see the next performance that he shows on the way to the Kentucky Derby. My number six may also be a bit surprising, but I have hidden scroll in that spot. The reason I have him there is because I think if he rates off the pace in the Florida Derby, he has a great chance to win and lock up his position in the Kentucky Derby. His half mile was an eye-popping 45.36 in the, a mile and a 16th two-turn race. That is, again, almost suicide, like much better in the Gotham. I think if he learns to rate, he can be a very top horse going forward. Number seven is Baffert's third horse. He's just an incredible trainer. Mucho Gusto, who won the Robert B. Lewis and looks to win the Sunland Derby this Sunday. He has an easy, easy chance to win the Sunland Derby, and I think he can win by anywhere from 5 to 10, honestly. Another twist of fate is the only horse that can really challenge him there. Number 8, another shocker, Divine Image. 
Now, some of you may never have heard of her. Yes, that's right. It's a her. She's coming from the UAE, and it looks like she'll go into the UAE Derby next. She's performed well in the UAE Oaks and was a nice winner over males in the Dubai Super Saturday on March 9th. Number nine is Rebel Division One winner, Long Range Toddy. I'm not completely sold on him yet because he hadn't won that much of a big race beforehand, but I think I can jump on the bandwagon if he does well in the Arkansas Derby. And number 10 is Tacitus, the other Bill Mott trainee, who won the Tampa Bay Derby coming up the rail. The Azari Stakes featured a top field, never before really seen in the Azari, a very strong field that included Midnight Bizu, who is a rival to Monomoy Girl and winner of the controversial Cotillion, a late returning off a long layoff in the Azari, and she had been a prior winner of the Alabama, Eskimo Kisses, the last winner of the Alabama, and Shamrock Rose, the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint Champion, also the Eclipse Award winner for Female Sprinter. In the end, it was Midnight Bizu given a great ride by Mike Smith coming up the rail at the eighth pole to get by Olate and Shamrock Rose. Eskimo Kisses was way back in last position. The Essex Handicap featured no real star. In fact, no real good horse at all whatsoever. But Giant Expectations came in after a nice third to Battle of Midway, the late Battle of Midway, very tragic story at Santa Anita, and McKinsey. And it looked like he would be the big favorite. He wasn't the big favorite, but he, I think, was the favorite. And he ran a nice third. Snapper Sinclair, a determined second, and rated our superstar, the upset winner of the Essex Handicap. This is it, this weekend, the Louisiana Derby, the first of seven 100-point prep races on the road to the Kentucky Derby 2019. This year's edition is headlined by War of Will, who is undefeated on dirt and winner of the Lecomte and Risen Star Stakes. He also was a good turf horse, but I think he's really found a home on dirt. I don't see him losing here. Good post-position draw, good jockey, good trainer. He has the total package. I think he has a great chance to win and go forward to do well in the Kentucky Derby. The most likely horse, in my opinion, that can up that can upset War of Will is the Todd Pletcher trained spinoff, who won his most recent race by 11 and three quarter lengths at Tampa Bay Downs after a third in the Saratoga Special to a very nice horse in Call Paul. I think that Sueno for Keith DeSormo could get into the Kentucky Derby with even a third place after two nice finishes in the Southwest and the Sham, not in order. Um, And Country House, this may be a bit low of a position, but I think he could be a bit vulnerable in here. I don't think that his past performances really stack up to the top three that I suggested. I think that my that my top horse is going to be War of Will in this race, and he'll probably be the most likely favorite. I don't like to be chalky, but I think this is going to be some place where I have to go to the favorite. That's it for this week's show. On next week's episode, I will be talking more about the potential derby horses in the Florida Derby, headlined by Code of Honor and Hidden Scroll. And we'll look beyond our borders in Dubai, where the Dubai World Cup could be headlined by maybe Audible, Thunder Snow. Looks like a wide open field in that race. I'll see you next week on Off to the Races.